I'd like to take a moment and quickly go over CoffeeScript usage because it's slightly different. So if we were to take a main.js file and change it to main.coffee, how would we go about defining, for example, a model? So rather than doing, for example, person equals backbone.model.extend, in CoffeeScript, what we would do is say class person extends backbone.model. Now we could do something like person equals a new person, name is John Doe. So if I were to compile this down into JavaScript, what you can see here is we pass in backbone.model, that's represented by super, and then we extend our person variable accordingly. Then at the bottom, we create our new instance of it. So if we want to see what this looks like, I can console.log person. Next, I will compile it down, switch over to Chrome DevTools, and now, as usual, we have our person object. So that can lend itself to a much cleaner system. So for example, what about defaults? Well, we could say defaults, and then rather than doing something like that, in CoffeeScript, we would say defaults, name is John Doe, occupation is worker. That way, if we were to leave that off and we put to JSON, let's compile that down. And if I reload the page, we can see that we have an object with the name of John Doe and an occupation of worker, or we can override that. Compile it, reload the page, and now we have a normal object as we're used to. So here's some things you might want to consider. Let's create another class for person view. That's going to extend backbone.view. And now within the initialize method, and how about we listen for an event? So rather than doing this.model, in CoffeeScript, we can just do at model. So we'll say at.model on, and we'll do something really nice like yo, 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 yo. We're going to trigger say hi. So now let's create that. We'll say say hi. And within here, once again, we'll console.log yo, yo, yo. Now, in order for this to work, somewhere in our project, this needs to fire. So at the bottom, we'll begin by creating a new person. So person equals a new person. Next, we need to create our new person view and pass in the model. And I will store that within a variable called person view. Now we're going to trigger an event on the person. So person.trigger, yo, yo, yo. So if we did everything right, we create our new instances and then we trigger this yo, yo, yo event. Our view listens for that. And when it occurs, we run say hi and we console.log yo, yo, yo. All right, a ridiculous example, but let's see how that works. So we'll compile that down, switch back to the browser, and sure enough, we do get yo, yo, yo. But here's what I'm getting at. What if instead we console.log this? Well, now if I reload the page, we're going to get the person model, not the person view. And that's because we're used to passing in the context, right? Well, let's try that now. Reload the page, and now, yes, we do get person view. Well, in CoffeeScript, we can do it slightly different if you want. We can use a fat arrow. And when we use a fat arrow, that's going to ensure that within this method, this is still going to refer to, in this case, the person view instance. Let's compile it and try it again. Now notice if I refresh the page, this will still refer to person view as we would hope. So granted, this was a very trivial example, but what you're gonna find is because Backbone and CoffeeScript are behind the same person, they really lend themselves beautifully to one another. And in fact, when I'm working at Backbone, I am most comfortable when using CoffeeScript because honestly, you can't get much better than this or this as opposed to what you would manually have to write in vanilla JavaScript.